welcome to a episode of My Best Eleven podcast. Today we are joined by a man who um, spent a large portion of his career, we're just speaking off air before, with Luton Town, uh, but also um, has spent some time at Mansfield, Grimsby, Lincoln, Newport and um, up north in Middlesbrough as well. Play for some fantastic teams there. So we are very lucky to be joined by Mr. Michael Saxby, who some people probably know more as uh, Mike Saxby. How are you, Mike? Um, very well indeed. Very well. Good morning to you both. Oh, well, good afternoon from me, but it's good morning to, certainly to Marv, isn't it? Morning to Marv, evening to me. <laughs> yeah, yes, right, Mike. Yeah. Morning, Mike. It is It is good morning. And um, I just said to Andrew, before you come on, um, it's, it, it gave me an excuse to go, to get up early this morning and go there for a run. Go. So I've been for a run and, and, and I've, I've woken myself up and now I'm ready to go. You're Excellent. well on it, Marv. Thank you. Well, hopefully, Marv's going to be on the ball with the guesses. So, um, those people who haven't heard the podcast before, um, what Mike's going to do is go through um, and pick his best 11 players he's ever set foot on a pitch with. Um, so, we'll jump straight into the deep end. Formation, sir, and the reasoning for your formation. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a, a 4 3 3. Um, it, it's all, it's a formation that I played probably 99.9% of my career. Uh, certainly with my first club, Mansfield, we played it there. Uh, when I went down to Luton, it was David Pleat's philosophy to play 4-3-3. Um, occasionally, which I'll come on to later, it, it might drop uh, a sweeper in there, depending on which particular team we played that day. But yeah, 4-3-3 is uh, the chosen formation for myself. Favourite one you played in, is it? Yeah. Or did you like I it a little so. bit, or do you prefer three at the back? No, I like the 4-3-3, because um, the 4-3-3 can change to a three at the back, depending on, on what sort of pullbacks you've got, as, as Marvel sort of backed me up on that. So I think it's a flexible position, and I also feel it's uh, it's the most attacking formation as well. Oh, interesting. So, certainly the way we played it at Luton, it was. Oh, definitely, as you say, you were there from some very, very successful times. Um, yeah. Some people say arguably the most successful time we've had, so... Um, obviously, a little bit later as well. So we'll jump straight in. Goalkeeper wise, when you are ready, sir. Okay. So um, from what I pick up from the conversation of Marvin and previous ones I've heard, um, you, your guy, I give clues to my choice. You guys have a little bit of a guess, and then when yep. we arrive at him, <clears throat> a few mentioned in dispatches for the guys who didn't make it. Is that correct? Correct. correct. Excellent. Perfect. Yeah. Right. Uh, again, as, as I was speaking to Marv uh, before we came on, such a such a wide choice of players in every position at, at this particular time. Marv, you'll know that having gone to Luton just after, a, <coughs> excuse me, just after I left. But <coughs> I honestly feel that we could have put two teams out at that time, both competitive enough to compete in that second division. I honestly feel that goalkeeper wise. Um, a, a wide, very wide choice. The guy I'm going to go for is the guy I played with mostly there. Um, he was the kind of tiny keeper that I liked playing behind. He was dominant. Uh, he'd come out to, to, to claim balls and punch balls and, and take everything out in his way, um, which, Marv, you'll know as a defender, uh, you, you much prefer. Um, I occasionally would have liked him to give us a shout to let him know he was coming because <laughs> uh, he wasn't very good at that. Um, hence the, the broken nose you can see and a few stitches over the eyes. But um, yeah, should have should have been capped. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't. Um, Scotsman. I was going to say, was he Scottish? I, was from, say. I think we probably got it from now. Um, but yeah, top, top keeper. Um, once you have told me who you think it is, I'll tell you the guy who almost Andrew? made it off. Sorry? This must be Andrew. Andrew. Do you know Andrew? Uh, Andrew? I'm going to guess. Jake Finlay. It is Jake Finley. Yes. It is Jake. Yeah. As I say, many others that could have could have got the nod, but the fact that I played most of my time there with Jake um, just about tips the wink for him. Uh, I mean, pl players that, that that could have quite easily have, um, have slotted in there, the likes of, of Andy Dibble. Let's see, like Andy Dibble, man of the match at Wembley, Marvin, you can probably remember. Yeah. The, 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 the Gold League Cup. Les Seeley, character, personality, but a great, great Great keeper as well, went on to Manchester United. Um, young keepers like Andy Beasley, 
And a guy came towards the end of my time. I think he played in the, the Man City game where we, where we want to stay up. Tony Godden? Yeah. Yes. Remember Tony? I remember him. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah. Uh, not taking anything away from Jake. If I'd have played a little bit more with Tony, Tony might have just sneaked in front of Jake. But the fact that I played the majority of those games with Jake just gives him the, uh, the pick this time. I, I remember brief, brief, sorry, Andrew, I remember briefly like the likes of some of you characters and Jake was still, I think, in and around when I was just sort of like as an apprentice or he might have been just coming back to games. He reminded me of um, someone who was very like just like a, a goalkeeper, crazy, crazy, loud, That's crazy, fake. rash. Smart, they all are, we know that. You have to be to play that position. Who wants to stand about for 90 minutes, maybe touch the ball three or four times? Crazy, crazy keepers. But what, 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 you know, he was a big lad. He was well built, but very agile, great shot stopper. And as I say, the, the main thing that, that gets him in my side, he, he was, he, he'd come and take high balls, which, as I say, as a defender, that's, um, that helps you out no end. Yeah. So, so great, those great people who are kind of, of, well. of a younger, of a younger era, Mike, who would you say yeah. um, Jake is closest to? I'll see when Jake was in his, his prime, um, yeah. compared to the modern day keeper who's around in Premier League or foreign Europe or whatever, yeah. who would you say he's most like in your right, opinion? That's a great question, actually. That's, that's a great shout. I would probably have to say um, Jordan Pickford. Yep. So good with his uh, feet. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and Jake was. Jake was as well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, these these goalkeepers playing uh, out from the back is nothing new. Uh, we used to do it then. I mean, not to the extreme that they do it now. I think it's gone way beyond, you know, how, how they should do. Uh, but, but but Jake was, wasn't was fearful of getting the ball down and pinging a 50-60 yard pass out to Mossy on the left wing. Um, great shot stopper, as I say. I like Jordan Pickford. Prone to the odd mistake. Uh, I think he'd be the first to to admit that. Uh, but the saves he made and the contribution he made to the side far outweighs that. Yeah, pick your ten, picks up 10, 12 points a season just from him alone. Oh, ab absolutely. And, and we used to pride ourselves, although we were known as a very attacking side, scoring a lot of goals, we used to pride ourselves on, on clean sheets and not let, letting many goals in. Yeah. No, and I, and he, was a big, it, he was a big factor in that. Fantastic. So, moving on. You said four at the back. Um, we'll start right at back. the right back or left yeah, back, whichever we'll one you prefer. Right back. Yeah, we'll go for the right back to start with. Again, such a wide choice. I, because it's such a wide choice, I've wrote a few down, so I hope you don't mind me just referring to notes occasionally. Um, That's fine. So the guy that gets in there, um, I've been in, I'm, I'm in contact with on social media still. Hopefully when all this pandemic's over, we're going to get together in Spain and have a bit of golf and some, uh, some catch-up time. From, from the Midlands, um, you're going to get it straight away. Nickname Basher. <laughs> marauding, marauding right back, hard as nails, um, was known to the rest of the squad as David Pleat's son. Pleat what was that? Why was he known as David Pleat's son? Yeah, oh gosh, he was, he was Pleat's favourite without a shadow of a doubt. I mean, David bought him from neat to neat, which is fair enough. Sorry, uh, sorry, Mike. Come on. I mean, I'm sure everyone's guessed who it is, but like, let's just say his name, Kirk Stevens. Kirk um, Stevens. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's Kirk. Very, very popular with the crowd. Crowd pleaser because of his 100% uh, attitude, his aggression. Up and down that right hand side. So, so fit. Um, was, he, was he in digs with Pleaty? He what, sorry? Was he in digs in, with Pleaty? Why well, you said he was his son? I just, I was, curious. was he in digs with David <laughs> Pleaty? <laughs> no, the, the reason he was his son is, is because David just used to absolutely adore him. As I say, which is fair enough, he bought him from money. He knew all about him. Just as a bit of an example, we'd have a team meeting on a, on a Friday morning and David's team talk would go something along the lines of, um, Findlay, when you get it, throw the ball out to Saxby. Saxby, when, when you've got it, Pass the ball into midfield to Hill. Hill, you bang it out to Moss on the left-hand side. David, you then switch it to Kirk, who's running down the right-hand side. So it's Finley, Saxby, Horton, Moss, but it's Kirk when he comes to back here. <laughs> <laughs> so you can imagine the stick he used to get for that, uh, for that Moss. Yeah. 
Very but a lovely guy, guy, though. Lovely guy, I hear as Great well. Guy. Absolutely fantastic guy. Yeah, as I say, I've, I've kept in touch. One of the few, uh, unfortunately, I've managed to keep in touch with. Mentioned in dispatches, um, Tim Breaker could have quite easily got in there. Fantastic right back. Again, great stamina up and down the right hand side. Um, hard as nails, Tim. Fit as a fiddle. Rob Johnson, as well, Mitchell Thomas, all players like that. I'm sure Marv, uh, they were yeah. still there when, when, when Marv joined the club. But the good thing about the squad they had as well, most of them could play in three or four different positions, as, you, as you'll see a little bit uh, as my sort of team um, comes along. Um, so there's lots of flexible players there that could play fullback, they could play centre back, they could play in midfield. Um, but for me, Kirk, Kirk gets the right back position. Perfect. Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> left back then. Who's going to be our left back? Yeah, is there, a, is there a similar sort of theme coming along here to the players? <laughs> you mean with, Ricky, <laughs> with Ricky's team, you mean? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Le yeah. Left back, boys. We'll go left back before the centre half, if that's okay yeah. with you guys. Yeah. Again, spoilt for choice. Um, again, I'm, I'm going to go with um, a guy who was at. Um, our digs before you, Marv, before me. Welsh lad, Welsh international. Um, could play left back, could play left side midfield, could play centre half. Um, fit as a fiddle. Um, surprised Luton let him go when they did um, because I think his, be his best stage was to come. Um, but I I'm, I'm guessing that you know who it is from the clues I've given you already. Mark, Mark Hazelwood. Mark Hazelwood, absolutely. Yeah. What a top, top player. Got, got everything in his locker. Um, up and down the left wing, if he was playing um, left back all the time. Great left foot. Wonderful left foot, Marv. Um, went on to play for Charlton afterwards. He played for Wales, uh, both under 23s then, and the full international squad. Fell into a little bit of um, bother after he came out of the game. Um, but, but what a great guy. Uh, and what a great player. So, so Mark would get in at left back. Rick, um, Ricky did the same thing, Mike, about surprise that they let him go when they yeah. did. I mean, or, you, I mean, I don't know. Was it, who was be, who was coming through? Was it because someone was coming through? Do you think, or was they it bought, good money they got offered for him? They brought Richard Money in from Liverpool, um, so he, he was going to be the left back. But, but Mark also played centre half, he played left side midfield. Um, so he's the kind of guy, even if he's not in your in your first eleven mark, what what a great squad player to have that can, right. can slot in anywhere. Do you know what I mean? Especially in the days so when, when you only had three subs, subs as well. Yeah. I mean Mark, uh, I can remember the first day I went down to Luton into the into the digs at, at Mrs. Goff. Ricky was already there and Mark had got married that summer and he'd moved out but he came back that first night um, welcomed me, said hello, introduced himself. So from, from the start, it, it was like Ricky, Mark, and um, were like my closest friends because they're the first two I met. Uh, I can remember when I got married a year later, they both came along to my wedding with a, with a couple of the other players. Um, but as I say, the reason for letting him go, Marv, I, I don't know 100% whether anything had happened behind the scenes. It didn't make a lot of sense football-wise, uh, but there right. must have been a reason for it. I'm, I'm sorry, I just went. Andrew said something there a minute ago foot, about, especially when they had three subs. They went, did they lose one then? Because when I started playing, they only had two. <laughs> what two subs? subs? We only had one. Left. How was it? It was one, wasn't it? I don't know. I'm sorry. And you said there was three when they had three subs. Oh, hey, 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 hey. Look at my age. Sorry. I just, <laughs> I meant as in three people on the bench. I wasn't even getting that three coming on. I, I, oh. I remember it when there was three on the bench. That's when I started fully getting into football. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. When it, in them days, when, it, when I was there, just a one sub. Just, just one sub, yeah. Players, just a one sub, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So we, we got through that promotion winning season using probably 15, 16 players max. Wow. Really? How do you reckon Pepper go these days, days with that? These days, it's 20 or 30 players teams, yeah. teams use. There's no rotating then. You knew if you weren't playing one particular Saturday or, or midweek game, you were dropped. If you weren't rotated, you were dropped. Is, what is it? Is it, is it but, five now or is it seven? I'm, I'm lost count. I've, you know what? I've lost count. 
Is it five or seven now? No, you're allowed to make five subs. Right. But, you, um, no, but I think you're allowed. I think it's nine on the bench, yeah. No, yeah. it's not. Crazy. Yeah, nine. It's... Nine. So you, can have, you can have actually have eight or nine players on the bench. Yeah. So and five, five from that nine. Five, five from that nine. Yeah. Yeah. And that can be done at three times during the game. I think I think that's what it is. Like do you reckon, else, you, do you reckon you'd have still got in the squad, Marv? Or do you reckon, do you reckon you'd have got in more I'm, squads? I'm, I'm gutted because I probably would have been involved. In, like I would have been on the bench for the Littles for surely, for definite then, in 1988. I was in the squad, but I didn't get, I didn't get on the bench because there was only two subs back then, mind you. Yeah, there was, there was, only, there was only one at the time I'm one talking when I was there. Wow. I mean, well, right. so, it's, uh, sorry, Marv. I was going to say, just, um, just before we get into the centre halves, um, yeah. how did I mean, yours are centre half? I've heard a lot about your a cultured centre half as well. How did the move to Luton come about, or did you know there was there was like there was talking, obviously rumours that you might be going somewhere? And if that was the case, yeah. did you think it'd be Luton? It, it's a great question. Um, I, I was at Mansfield uh, from leaving school. Um, in and outside, I, you, you just mentioned about the, the cultured centre back. I know Ricky spoke glowingly, which was very nice of him, um, about playing out from the back. I used to tend to overdo it a bit like some of them do now. And it's hey, I do, struggle. I did it, <laughs> yeah. Is it? So it's a matter of trying to get the balance right, Marv, isn't it? You know, know when to sort of play out from the back and know, know when to put it into row's head. I think I eventually mastered that. Uh, when I was at Mansfield, I was in and out of the team. Then Billy Bingham came as manager. Billy Bingham used to be at Luton a lot of years ago as a player, yeah, yeah. Uh, really top player. He managed Northern Ireland. He played for Northern Ireland. And for some reason, he must have took to me because when he came to Mansfield, he put me straight in the side from his first, for his first game. And then I played every game under him until I left. So the last season I was at Mansfield, I played all 46 games. I got player of the year. There was talk about clubs watching Tottenham, Aston Villa, no mention of Luton. The big one was Leeds United. Apparently the chief scout, a guy called Dave Blake, was at our, our last 10 games and he, and he was watching myself. So it looked nailed on as though if there was a move going to happen at all, it was going to be Leeds United. My contract was up. Billy was due to go on a, on a family holiday to Australia. I'm not signed my new contract because I'm dragging my feet, hoping a big club comes in, Bob. You know how it works. Um, so the, it, it came for the day Billy to go on, on holiday, the manager, and I still hadn't signed. So he stayed behind, sent the rest of his family on holiday. He stayed behind for negotiations. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> in the end, I had a word with a couple of the experienced pros then. He said, look, if a top team wants you badly enough, they'll come and pay a fee whether you're on a contract or not. So I eventually signed. Billy went away on his holiday about three or four days after he should have done. While he was away, I got a phone call from the chairman at Mansfield Town. Luton, Luton had been on the phone. They want to have a chat to you. I said, well, I've just, just signed a new contract with Billy. He said, well, we've given Luton permission to talk to you. Uh, <laughs> they've offered £200,000 for you, which was a lot of money back then. Wow, yeah. Certainly for a club like Mansfield, uh, lower reaches of third division. So I said, OK, I'll... Um, I'll, I'll, I'll go and meet them. He said, you're meeting them at Leicester Forest East tomorrow, one o'clock, David Pleat and, and uh, John Troy from Luton. So I said, fair enough. I'm 20 year old, a lad from a mining village in Mansfield, still thought he needed a passport to get out of Mansfield. <laughs> and all of a sudden, <laughs> all of a sudden, I'm going to meet David Pleat uh, and this on Troy from Luton, um, £200,000 of figure mentioned. I don't, I, I don't know what the hell to say, what to ask for, what to do. My dad, who's always followed my career, bless him, uh, said, I'll come with you. He said, don't worry, I'll come with you. So he picked me up this day. We drove to Leicester Forest East. We parked up. And just to let you know, at this moment in time, my dad was the biggest Morecambe and Wise fan you've ever, <laughs> ever liked to meet. You know where this is going, don't you? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I can see him now when the Morecambe and Wise Christmas TV shows are on, just sat there giggling. Another time, it's just a, a dour minor, but more coming wise, he used to crack up. So we're driving down to Leicester Forest East. I said, Dad, I ain't got a clue what to say, what to ask for, what contract to ask for, what wages. He says, leave it to me. He said, don't say a word, leave it all to me. I said, fine. So we walked in the, the foyer, Leicester Forest East. We've gone to reception. Uh, Mr. Sykes, we're here to meet David Fleet. So they put it over the tannoy. 
uh, visitor in reception for, for David Pleat. And a guy called Ken Guthrie, which was David Pleat's coach at the time, comes out, meets me and my dad. He says, come with us, we've got a little room set aside for talks. So we walked in, introduced us to the entourage. There's about four people there. David Pleat, uh, Dennis Mortimer, who was the chairman, uh, and this is Eric Morecambe. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we shook hands with them all. And as soon as my dad sees Eric Morecambe, his mouth drops open like that. He starts up. <laughs> so thought, here we go. So we sit down. They start talking. He says, we want you to come to Luton. We think you can do us a good job on building a, tea, uh, a team, push it for promotion. Um, this is the deal. This is the deal on the table. I can't even remember what my basic salary was. But at that time, players used to get paid 5% of the transfer fee. That was the last year that was in, because after that, you used to negotiate your own. So right. that was £10,000 straight away. He said, you'll get a £10,000 signing on fee and you get £10,000 loyalty bonus, all paid over the term of your contract. So that's 30 grand straight away for this 20-year-old from Mansfield who's never been abroad or anything. He said, you want to sign a five-year contract? Well, what I thought was, Leeds was supposed to be interested, West Ham, and in the end, there's only Luton made a bid who finished a bit near the bottom of the second division the previous year. So I thought, I'll take a couple of year contract. If it don't work out, I can always move on. I said, well, I was only looking for a three-year contract. He said, we're paying 200 grand for you. He said, we don't want, you know, we can't give you any less than five years. I looked at my dad. He just stared at Morecambe with his mouth out like that. He never said a <laughs> word. <laughs> so we carried on talking. To cut a long story short, at, at the end of the day, I, I, I'm going to sign anyway. It's a chance to better myself. Um, signed on the dotted line. Came out, got in the car. My dad looked at me. He says, did well for you there, son, didn't I? Never said a word. <laughs> Didn't say a word all the time they were in there. So that, that's how the transfer came about, Mark. That's a fantastic, that's a fantastic story. Yeah, the Eric Morecambe there meeting okay. you to sign your contract or to, to go over the talk. That's a that's brilliant. It's, it's a nice tool for them to have though, isn't it? If they're going to meet somebody, it's a nice oh. sort of thing to have to impress a player. Like it did how, you how many dad, times did you bring that up with your dad over the years after oh, that time? time. Not, not, not with him. <laughs> Not with him because I did, but I tell all my mates about it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's get on to the centre story. halves then. That's a brilliant You're story. Right? Yeah, centre half, yeah. centre half. Yeah, let's get on to the, yeah, on to the centre half. Sorry, I was. Uh... No, 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 that's was great. Good. No, it's fantastic. Oh, no, I great love story. that. Was a, that was one of the best stories. That was beautiful. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> so, centre half again, sport for choice. Um, I might have you here, guys, with, with one um, that I don't think Ricky picked or, or mentioned. So I might, I might have you here. Um, there, there are players that, that, that could have gone in there. Um, I'll, no, I'll, I'll explain who the, who the guy is to start with. He, he was the captain of the club when I got there. Um, Welsh international. He, he ended up staying there a, a lot of years. He got a nice move to Tottenham um, about 18 months after I was there. Played in a, an FA Cup final for Tottenham. It was a Welsh international. Played for Wales numerous times. Went to play in America towards the end of his career, I believe. And I think he's now living in Australia. Oh, Andrew. Come on, Andrew. A Welsh international went to Tottenham. He might have a say. Yeah. He might have a say. I'm going to embarrass myself by nationalities. That's my problem. This is possibly the, the only one where I might sort of I might I might sort of check you out. Block Clive Goodyear. Good Clive Goodyear. Good Firm, good looking lad. Ah. No, no. And he was um, and he was a captain. Did you say, Mike? He was captain. He was, cap he was captain. He was captain. Yeah, he was captain of the club. He'd been there a lot of years. Um, he, he got a transfer, I think, at the end of my first season there. But he was captain for that that first season I was there. Yeah. Oh. Well, Long, no. long curly hair, good, good player. Long fantastic, curly fantastic hair. Player. Yeah. Welsh international. Nah. Went to Tottenham. Played for Tottenham in an FA Cup final. I have a feeling that I should know this, but like, nah, are, go are, on. You say, go on, are you going to say his name? I know. I'm going to. I'm now. I'm going to know of him definitely, hundred percent. I'll give, I'll give um, you Christian name to start. His Christian name was Paul. Price. Paul Price. Paul Price. Yes. Paul Price. Remember him? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew. I've seen. I knew. I knew. I knew, I knew, I knew it. Paul Price. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good, good player. Very, very, very good player. Um, bit, a bit. Who can I sort of uh, like him to? Like the likes of Colin Todd and play, players like that. Um, quick uh, and used to inter intercept balls, which probably didn't sort of endear him to people as much as it should. Uh, good, good engine. Good in the air. Um, despite his good looks, not not many broken noses, not many stitches that was left to me and whoever it was at the side of him. But uh, club club captain, great lad. Uh, got a good move to Tottenham, as I say, captain Wales. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm still, go go with Paul Price uh, on on the right hand side uh, of the centre backs. Um, I'll tell you the other one uh, before I mention in dispatches who could have been in there or maybe should have been in there. Um, again, you're going to get this one pretty much straight away. Absolute Rolls Royce as a player, Northern Ireland international. Yeah. Could play left back, right back, could do anything. Uh, top snooker player, you name it. I got fantastic moves to Manchester United, Chelsea. Obviously, World Cups with uh, with Northern Ireland. I'm sure they both got Mal, it already. Mal, yeah, Maldonado. 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 Yeah. Mal now, yeah. the, I said early on about players being flexible and able to play in different positions. That first season, I was there, Mark. The back four was, was Kirk, myself, Paul Price, and Mal played the full season at left back. Really? Yeah. Oh, did he have the pace yeah. for left back? Uh, uh, he wasn't the quickest. That's a great, it's a yeah. great spot, but it, it just quickness of mind, uh, positional yeah. sense, yeah. quickness yeah. of mind. Um, you, you wouldn't know that he, he lacked pace by, by looking at him simply because he was in the right position uh, at the right time. Yeah, and played, funny, played the full full season at left yeah. at left back, and it was only when Price left at the end of that season that he moved Mal inside to play at the side of me, and um, then it was a, a mix and match job for a while. Whether Mark Hazel would played at left back or a lad called Wayne Turner, um, but yeah, yeah. So the back four: Kirk, Pricey, Mal Donaghy, um, and Mark Hazel would left back. Mark Hazel would. And I was going to say, Andrew, he went on to play at Manchester United that's left back quite a bit as well, Mal did. Yeah, again, he even played in midfield for us at times. Yeah. And could, could quite easily have played up front, I would imagine, as, as a support to a target man. Yeah. Just one, yeah. Of those, one of those one of those annoying people that are good at everything, you know? <laughs> well, you, you mentioned... You mentioned you got obviously Paul and Mal, um, and obviously yourself playing centre back. What type of player did you prefer playing next to? Did you prefer a, a bustler next to you? Obviously, if you saw his, and you mentioned as Ricky is a bit more cultured centre back. Yeah. Did you like to be they, next to somebody like you, or do you like to be next to a, a blood and guts? No, uh, I, I prefer to be at the side of Pricey and Mal. To be fair, was similar uh, similar in style uh, at centre back. Um, uh, as Marvel probably backed me up, you, you probably got a, a dominant centre half. If you're playing a back four, you'll have a dominant centre half who goes and tries to win. And, and head everything, and you'll have somebody who just sort of tidies up and, and sweeps up at the back of them, just in case they miss any flick-ons. So I, 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 although I like to play out from the back, I was the big daft six foot three centre half who'd go and try and head everything, uh, whether it be the ball or the centre forward or or whatever. <laughs> and Pricey and, and Mal were the ideal foil, really. Yeah. 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 I don't think you could. Score, I don't think you could really play. Uh, and uh, a guy who's going to get mentioned now is a guy called Clyde Goodyear. Clive came in two seasons later as a regular when I got my, my injury. Uh, and Clive was a similar type to me. He was the one who wanted to be dominant, go and uh, win everything and have somebody tidy up behind him. I don't think it really works having two like that together or even two of the courty ones together. You've got to have a mix of one of each. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that leads me on to another one of my questions. I'll do a bit of research into you, the, particularly the back end of your career as well, why you're at Middlesbrough. Yeah. And yeah. um, there was one particular man who made it very big at United, who I believe was there at the back end of your career, it was Gary Pallister. Is that right? Gary was just starting off at Middlesbrough when I was there. Yeah. 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 Could you tell, I mean, just, just to, on a, Gary Pallister and Colin Cooper was there at the same time, weren't they? Both of those, yeah, that's right. both of those two youngsters coming through. Um, yeah. What was your job when you were at the back end of your career at Middlesbrough? Um, did Middlesbrough bring you in as somebody to nurture? I mean, these two went on to, 
particularly Gary Pallister went on to the top, top level. Um, did yeah. they bring you in to do that or as a coach or were you there and to play? No, do you know what I mean? As a player, pure, purely as a player. When my, when my career ended at Luton, um, my, my contract came to an end. I had a five-year contract, as, as I've mentioned. But for the last two seasons, I, I was out with this career-ending injury. I didn't play a first-team game for the last two seasons at Luton. I was in and out of the reserves. I was on loan at clubs like Lincoln, Grimsby, Newport that we've mentioned. So at the end of my five years, the contract, my contract was up. We'd signed Paul Elliott. I was, I was never the same player again. I, I was carrying a bit of a limb. I was in pain. Um, so it was obviously going to let me go. I went to Newport. A guy called Colin Addison signed me at Newport. I was there three months. And then fortunately, because if there's any Newport guys listening, sorry, Newport's the end of the world. Uh, it's... Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was a nightmare time down there. But Middlesbrough came in and they, they, they were in the old second division, which is where Luton were when I went there. So I, I was going back to the same level I went to Luton at. And they were struggling. They were letting goals in left, right and centre. So I spoke to the manager, Willie Madra, and he said, look, we need a dominant centre half. He'd already had one from Mansfield, a lad called Stuart Bone, who captained them for about 10 years. Um, and they thought I was similar to him. So they signed me to try and shore up the defence. Um, but as I say, I, I was never the same again. I mean. I was good enough to get in their side. We kept the first four games I played, we kept clean sheets, which is what he wanted. But I was still in and out of hospital in those 18 months there, having operations um, about every three or four months or so. It was uh, it was a bad time, really. Wasn't Mowbray there then as well? Was he there then, Tony Mowbray or not? Yeah. Was Tony Mowbray was there. Yeah, Tony Mowbray. That's a good lad. Tony Mowbray, Colin Cooper, Gary Pallister. Stuart Ripley, remember Stuart Ripley? Stuart Ripley, yeah, the little winger, yeah. Blackburn, went to Blackburn, yeah. Yeah, Bert, Bernie Slaven. Bernie Slaven, Bernie Slaven up front, yeah. yeah. Archie, St Archie Stevens there, yeah. That's right, Archie came there, yeah, yeah. Was, uh, was, great set, um, great set Henry, of lads. Was Hendry there good then? Players. Who? Hendry? Hendry, another striker. No, no, no he, there, he went there after I left, Mark, yeah. Right. Yeah, so basically they, they, they signed me to try and shore up the defence that was leaking goals. Um, did it for a while, but my knee, my knee wasn't right, and I was just operation after operation while I was up there. Yeah, oh, that's a shame. But but in but it's um, a good opportunity to to finish your career with it with a good club. So um, what we can do pause, what we can do is pause it there, um, and we will yep. come back after the break to hear about the three midfielders and three attackers in Mike's uh, best eleven. Hi, my name is Steve Davis. An ex-Burnley teammate of mine, Lenny John Rose, is suffering from MND. Please let's raise awareness and funds and help Lenny in his fight against this terrible disease. Please check out hashtag IceFoot92. You can donate £10 by texting MNDLEN to 70085 or donate at his Just Giving page. Are you brave enough to take on the hashtag IceFoot92 challenge? Good luck and thanks for listening. Great, so we're back for part two of Mike's, it's actually my best 11. So far, we've got Jake Finley, Kirk Stevens, Mark Hazelwood, Paul Price and Mal Donaghy. So we'll then go to um, three midfielders. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know how you're going to set these, these players up. Are you, what are you doing, wide, wide? Or what, how are you thinking of setting these guys up? Just uh, just a narrow midfield three, uh, yep. just giving the, the two flank midfield players the opportunity to push on uh, the right hand player down the right, left hand player down the left, which is exactly how we played um, at Luton with with a sort of holding midfield player. But I mean, even back then, whoever played the holding midfield player had got a license to attack as well. Um, you know, we, we scored a hell of a lot of goals. We played attractive football, um, and um, yeah, so uh, I don't think you're going to have many problems guessing who's going to be on the right hand side of the midfield. <laughs> Is that where you're starting? Are you start? Are you starting? Are you starting with Ricky? Are you then you start with Ricky. Then we're going to start start with the right hand side of midfield. Yeah, uh, my my, uh, my brother, my dig partner for twelve months. Again, yeah. along with um, with Mark and Paddy, came up to my wedding, met the family. My one regret leaving Luton is I didn't keep in touch with Ricky and a, a lot of the other lads. I've only just sort of got back in touch again about two years ago when um, we had a David Pleat reunion just before Christmas a couple of years ago. Uh, big regret. I never kept in touch all that time. But we have done now. Um, and when uh, when this is all over, we'll be meeting up and 
go into a game or two, Marv, I hope to meet yourself there as well at some stage yeah. and, and get together for a few beers and, and a catch up. But Ricky, uh, as Marv, you, you'll know, absolute god at, at, uh, at Luton. What, what a player and what a nice guy. Had absolutely everything. I can remember when I went to, went to Mrs. Goff's, um, walked in, met, met Ricky, and he's there with, it, with this big, big hair, sat there with his feet up on, on, on the fluffy. And you know the layout at Mrs. Goff's, yeah. Marv, the, the two bedrooms. I, I was in the back bedroom, the, the little one that's got the wall to wall bed. The bed, bed oh. touches every. Yeah, you remember the, the bed touches yeah. every wall. Well, Ricky, Ricky's in the West Wing with his walk in wardrobe, uh, <laughs> his waiter, and, uh, and that's something. No, I'm joking. The guy's an absolute legend. I lo lo love him to bits, and, and what a player. Why he di didn't get 50 caps for England, I'll never know. Right. Any other nationality, he'd have had 40, 50 caps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Best player you've ever played with, Mike? Without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, without without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, uh, you, you think in a modern day era, he'd be much more appreciated just because of the the style of, he, of the play and the and, and that type of thing. You think? I, I, I think so. Yeah, I, I think so. Bearing, bearing in mind as well the state of the pitches back then, Marvel backed me up on that. Um, I can remember we used to have to have to remind the ground and the loop sometimes that it should be green side up. Um, but Ricky even used to glide along the, the muddy pitches then. So imagine what it's like on the uh, on the Wimbledon line yeah. pitches these yeah. days. Yeah. It, it'd be yeah. absolutely awesome. It, it literally got the lot. There's nothing else I can say about him. He could head, he could tackle, yeah. shoot, uh, work ethic, everything. And, and, and Mike, and such a humble guy because, I mean, like you oh. said, I, I was at Mrs. G's and Mrs. Goff's um, when I first joined and obviously Ricky had left and uh, got his family with Sharon and stuff and but like on the odd occasion he would like stay um at Mrs G's if they had a game um up north when he wanted to get an early, like an early like night and not have too much to worry about and I used to, I think it came full circle I used to be in what was his the west wing and he was oh, in that room yeah, he, he was in that. He was in that little room. Yeah, and he and he and he wouldn't like. I mean, take the room. And I mean, I, I mean, I. It, you know, he goes, no, no, that's your room now, Marvel. I mean, I'll, 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 I'll stay in there, and uh, I'll, I'll often see him like his his feet sticking out at the end of the bed, and his, and his <laughs> and <laughs> third morning. <laughs> but like he was a, such a humble guy. Like I said, you know. Yeah, uh, just just immaculate both on and off the field. Got the all, always looked immaculate off the field. Um, I'm, I'm saying too much here because it's going to end up costing me. I know that, but uh, I, I can't speak highly enough of the guy. I think I think he knows that. Yeah. What was he? Um, what was he like off the pitch? So I know a lot of people say he was a humble guy and things like that. But on um, was he a was he a chatty guy? I saw nights out. Obviously, you don't tell too many stories and stuff. But was he a was he a chatty guy or did he keep himself to himself? Uh, what was he like? Or once he had a few drinks and him, was he the life of the party? Little, you know, when I first went there, when I first went there, he was very introverted very quiet, and that first season, he had an absolutely outstanding season, and we had the Player of the Year awards upstairs at the club at the end, at the end of the first season, and I, I was fortunate enough to come third, I think, I can't remember whether it was David Moss or, or Jake got second place, but Ricky was voted by the fans as Player of the Year, and I think that brought him out of himself. I can remember David Coates, who was the coach at the time, uh, saying to me that's the best thing that could have happened to him because it actually bought, bought, it, bought him out of his shell a little bit because he you know, realised people appreciated him and, and he never looked back from there, he just went on from strength to strength. Still quiet and humble off the field, um, didn't buy many drinks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we, we, used, we were in digs, Mark Marvin on there, we were, we were in digs on, on Pointers Road and just at the top of the road there was a nice little pub on the corner called the Halfway House and just across yeah. the road from that was this uh, nightclub come casino, Caesar's Palace. Caesar's Palace, uh, yeah. Nightclub, yeah, yeah. And, and the casino there. It became there. Tiffany's later on. It became Tiffany's it, yeah. later on. Right, and we, we, we spent some hours in there. I mean, uh, at the right time, um, you know, the, the, them lads could party, but the right time in the right place. Uh, all, the, all the top bands, all the top acts used to come to Caesar's. Ricky, Brian and Mark Hazelwood, Brian Steen and Mark Hazelwood, all about a little bit, bit of a bet. So they, they go in the casino. Uh, they'd be in William Hills down the Watford Kenilworth Road. Uh, Mark, as you, as you know, 
Uh, I, I wasn't in Quebec, so um, you know, I, I, I didn't go with them. Um, but yeah, humble, soft-spoken off the pitch, humorous in, in, his, in his own way, uh, got little one-liners in there every now and again. Uh, and while we were in digs that first year, we used to play snooker quite regularly uh, in the evenings, because you can get a bit lonely in digs, Marv, as you know. Um, so me and Ricky used to go down to snooker all, uh, have a game of snooker. Uh, I think he still owes me money from that. I'll, I'll remind him of that when I, when I see him again. <laughs> but yeah, just just, just a down, down to a great guy and, and great player. Oh, fabulous, Thank fabulous. You. Moving on, moving along. Yes. Just the midfield. Uh, now, the ne- these next two are the ones, when we first started speaking, I, I said there might be a couple of, if not controversial, then um, decisions that people might not agree with um, for whatever reason. I'll go with the centre midfield player to start with. Um, I'll, I'll describe him to you, see if you can get him, and then we'll go with the uh, could have beans. So, uh, little tigerish midfield player, uh, gingerish hair, uh, beard and moustache, um, played for the Republic of Ireland, went on to play for Brighton. Brighton. Yeah. yeah, I think you've got him, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, great, great lad. He was my neighbour. I used to live in Western He was my, my neighbour. Um, used to have to babysit him a little bit because he, he, he liked to think he was, but he wasn't the best drinker. Uh, but me, Brian Steen lived in the next village, so it was me, Steeny. And this guy were like a regular sort of drinking crew. And the number of times that me and Brian have had to take him home, lift him out of the car. Um, his, his wife was a bit scary, actually. So what we'd do is we'd, we'd sort of prop him up against the front door, knock, and then run off before Pitt came to the door and let him in. So it, it, we'd knock on the door, me and Steenie would do a runner. She'd open the door and he'd just go four flat, flat on his face. But you got what, it, Andrew? What a great guy. You got it, Andrew? Oh, I can know names, but I don't know what people... I can't remember what people look like. I'm going to chuck Fuchilio out there. No. No, it's not. No. Um, it's um, I think Grealish. 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 We must Tony. be Grealish then. Yeah. Tony Grealish. Paddy. Yeah. Yes. Paddy. No, no, Paddy. What? what rest, rest in peace, by the way. He passed away a few yeah. years ago. Yeah. What? what, what, what I mean, a, Mike, what, again, <laughs> I know it's, it's BB maybe saying, like, because they... Had both had red hair, but was he like a bit like a, a ball, Alan Ball player? Was is that Absolutely. was that uh, was that was he he was like was he like that? I mean, I heard great, great, great things time. about him, and I'm surprised yeah. that I mean, I mean, maybe if we maybe spoke to a few more players from that era, I, he probably would have been a lot more teams because I mean, I heard he was an absolute tremendous player, great player, and, and and I explained the reasons why he wasn't appreciated so much in a second when I, when I give a couple of mentions in dispatches, but Tony signed, the, 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 the pre-season I signed, Tony also signed from, from Orient, so we went to Luton together, we sort of house hunted together, bought a house in the same village, um, I, I cost the club £200,000, Tony, Orient wanted £200,000 for him, but David Plea took it to a tribunal and then he got it, got it for 150000 which was an absolute bargain. So what a lot of people don't know is that first season we were there, uh, I, me and Tony were there, when we missed promotion uh, by a hair's breadth, a couple of points, it was a new team that David had put together, a new way of playing. There was three, four, five uh, new players in there and we went that close to getting promotion straight away. Uh, Tony was outstanding. The reason I said it might be a controversial choice is I would imagine a lot of people would have thought Brian Horton in there. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, which I can um. understand totally. Um, a lot of people say that when Brian came, he was the missing link because we got promotion the first season he was there. But what you've got to bear in mind is those first two seasons when Paddy was playing that position before Brian came, we were a matter of a point or two from getting automatic promotion anyway. Uh, it wasn't as if you were miles off. Yeah. No, absolutely, absolutely right. So I think I think Paddy goes under the radar a little bit simply because we had the success on, on under Brian, um, which is understandable. But so could have could have tossed the coin for either Nobby to be in there or Paddy. Um, but because of the personal uh, relationship I had with Paddy as right. well, um, I, and I know the work he did in that position before Brian came, I, it just gets him. Just gets him in, in front of Brian. No, good. 
Does that come like, as a so, surprise at all? No. No? No, I'd have thought Brian, Brian Horton would be in there. Um, and of yeah. course, I'm not going to mention the other name that I had in my mind. Um, but because he might be on left beside of midfield, so I'm not going to say say yet. Um, just in case he's in there, just in case we're yeah. doing. Um, so I'll move on to left midfield. Left midfield, yeah. Again, as I say, there's so many players in that squad that could play in numerous positions. There could have been could have been numerous players in here. Um, the guy I've, I've gone for, uh, I, I think probably the first clue. We'll give it away. International, uh, Spanish. Uh, he, he managed Spanish clubs. Is that he was yes. actually Yugoslav? That's what I meant. Sorry, he's yes. Yugoslavian. Yeah, yes. Yugoslavian. Yeah, sorry, that's what I meant. Yeah, yeah. I think he Radi. No. You think he Yeah, Radi Antic. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've got to get Radi in there somewhere. As I say, he played central midfield. He played centre half. Occasionally, when it when when we needed it, uh, David had put him in as a sweeper there. Whatever position he played, he played it at, at the very highest level. Uh, yeah. So I had to get Raddy in there somewhere, uh, and, I, and, I, and I just think he um, he gets ahead of the other players. I'm going to give a mention to um, because of his natural ability. Great guy, absolutely great guy. Another one that we lost. Uh, Excuse me, not not long ago. A couple of years uh, ago, yeah. A couple of years ago, yeah. Um, but what a great he, player! What a career he had. And was he like? I mean, I mean, many of the Luton fans who who remember him know uh, the goal at Manchester City. But just Man apart City. from that, Man City, yeah. Was was he? Te he looked technically like one of the the best players at the club. Absolutely, Mike. Absolutely. Just, there was another guy about at the time who I was comparing to, uh, and I, I, I couldn't give him any more praise, and that's Glenn Hoddle. So, right. so what made? Um, I mean, the Radiatic obviously came over, um, obviously Yugoslavian as well. There weren't too many yeah. um, players from that kind of that particular part of the world in, in that time. Um, coming to a club the way where Luton were, of course. Yeah. Uh, but you know, why did he come to Luton? Do you know what what in what made him? Pick Luton in particular, because I mean the quality of the play. You thought, no, Fred to Luton. Yeah. I'm a Luton fan, but he could have gone a lot higher. Yeah, well, when he when he met David Beat for talks, I presume that he met at Leicester Forest East, and he had Eric Morgan with him as well. <laughs> <laughs> Do you reckon they got the Morgan White show in? in... <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I mean, Dave, David Pleat was was a very very clever talker, very good talker. I'm sure Marvel will, will back me up in this. Very knowledgeable guy, and the way he sold. Um, Luton to me because I mean I absolutely love Luton uh, on social media now I, 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 I'm friends and, and followed with as well as players hundreds of supporters who, who we keep in touch with Marvel backed me up it, Luton sounds like a family it's not a football club mm. it's a family um, as I said we, we, we've all kept in touch we were like a band of brothers then um, if we were ever out on social it was one out all out it was never there was never any splintered groups or or anything like that, um, literally was such a great team spirit. And David um, had got this vision of how he wanted Luton to play, and that would suit uh, Raddy down to the ground. So I'm, I'm imagining that, that David, David's vision of, of what he wanted to do and how he wanted to achieve it is what made, uh, made Raddy come to Luton. No, excellent, excellent. So it's, moving it's, into it's strife, moving on to, have you got any... Um, have you got any oh, honourable mentions? I mean, I was going to mention Alan West. I was going to mention Westy as well. And I'm yeah. absolutely distraught. I can't get him in there. What a player and, and what a great guy as well. There's also the likes of Lil, Lil Fichillo. Yeah. Um, yeah I, I, you know, I couldn't squeeze in there. A couple of young lads. Um, I don't know if they were there when, when you went there. Well, Ray Daniel. You remember yeah, Ray Daniel? Ray Daniel, I remember Ray. Yeah. Uh, um, Gary Parker. Yeah. Parks. Parks, Parks, Parks was at Mrs. Goff's as well. Was it, yeah, was that's that right. Goff's? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Neil Madden, the lad called Neil Madden. I, I, I thought Ray and Neil might have gone on to have better careers than, than what they did because they were they were outstanding players at the time. I know Ricky used to speak very highly of Ray, uh, Ray Daniel and, and Neil Madden. So that's why I said at the start there. I honestly feel we could have put two teams out there right. almost as strong as each other. Um, but Westy, yeah, you're absolutely right. What a great player. 
uh, and what a great guy. Um, he, he, he was never a regular when I got there, uh, but whenever he came in, he, he never let the team down at all. Um, 100% great guy and great player. Unfortunately, can't quite squeeze him into this 11. <laughs> Oh, no, definitely. Um, so, moving on to strike force. Yeah. The goals. Um, I would imagine two of these are going to be absolutely nailed on that you'll get it with, with no problem at, at all. Um, the third one is one that is a bit debatable. Um, so, let's start with one of the central strikers. Um, I've already mentioned they lived in the next village to me. Uh, <laughs> South African descent, I think. You, you've got him already, haven't you? Brian, Brian yeah. Steen. How can, how can you possibly leave Steen out of, of, of any of any best 11? Absolute yeah. different class. Great player, great lad. I know I'm saying that about everybody, but it's true. You'll back me up with that, Mark. Um, probably the most natural finisher at, um, at the club in all, in all my time, in my five years there. Uh, and there were some good ones. But natural ability uh, and natural finishing, Steeny was absolutely untouchable. Yeah. Did, did he um, did he train much after the game? Or sorry, not after the game. In training, did he did he stay out? Did he hang back um, to, to keep practicing? Or was he literally that yeah, natural? He, he didn't feel like he needed to. All natural. He was, he, he was too mm. quick to get to the bookies after training. Yeah. He wouldn't, he wouldn't stay <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it, it was all, all natural. He didn't. He didn't have. He wasn't blessed with electric pace. So his, his first touch and first couple of touches had to be good. But they were even on those pitches back then. Um, it, it, it was just awesome, awesome to play with. Uh, it, it, nightmare to play against uh, in training. I'm sure you must have done it a few times. Um, Marv, you, you're playing up against him. Uh, knock the ball up to him. You think it's gone away from him. You're just about to go in for a tackle. He just nips it away from yeah. you, and he's gone while you're on your, you know, you're on your backside flailing. But yeah, God, God given ability, great lad. Another one who should have played more for England. I don't know who the one or two caps he got, um, but obviously it's the old unfashionable Luton um, yeah. thing there. What was was the same, um, but yeah, great player and. I would imagine, however many people that you speak to on this, is he, going to be one of your front two. Yeah, right. no, I'd agree. I'd agree. Yeah, are you fine? Like, like, yeah, you're right in saying that. I mean, like, I mean, you said he's a great. I mean, a real like top top finisher. Like, that yeah. was a, he was clinical. I mean, I mean, he, he, he got a chance nine times out of ten. It was in the back of the net. You knew as soon as if he was going to come onto the ball, it's a goal. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he wasn't. He wasn't the tallest, but. Undis uh, but deceivingly, he was very good in the air as well. Mm. It, it, it time his jumps to perfection. It, it, it'd often be six foot two, six foot three defenders to, to flick the ball on. Um, again, he got everything. So he reminds me a lot of. Can you remember John Robertson used to play for Forest? Yeah, yeah. Left wing, yep. left wing for Forest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. What what a, what a player he was, but never the quickest. Yet he get he get by full backs, Marv, if you remember. Sheer right. skill, not not pace, yep. sheer skill. Just a matter of a slight touch of the ball to one side and, and he'd, he'd cross the ball. And that's what Steenie was like. One second the ball's there, you think yep. you've got it, you go for it, and it's gone. And all you can see is number 10 disappearing in, 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 into the distance. Um, yeah, I, I, I could talk about I think you mentioned it earlier on. Now, I think for me, he was always the most dangerous when he had his back to goal. If he got that ball into his feet and into the box, it'll just drop the shoulder and go, well, you think he's going one way, and next thing he'll turn and he'll get a shot off. It's so, so dangerous with his back to goal. So, yeah. So, so, so talking, so, of strike, yeah. talking of strikers, Mike, who would you say yeah. for you was the most difficult striker to play against when you were, um, when you were a player yourself? Who was yeah. the hardest one to play against and why? I, I get asked this quite a lot. Um, the most difficult ones I, I, I came up against, being six foot three myself, with, with the five foot eight, five foot nine speed merchants, the likes of Steeny, who, you know, um, nippy, what Paul Walsh, I, ideal example, Walshy. I would hate to have played against Walshy. Um, a yeah. number of times in training, um, played against him. Uh, and I, I'm, he's not in my 11, so I'll, I'll just say a few words about him now. Uh, when he first came from Charlton, was Walsh there when you were there, Marv? 
No, he had it 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 moved on um by then. Yeah, it moved on. Right. Yeah. But I know but I know Walshy through through Wayne, Wayne Turner, because I think Wayne yeah, Turner was they, at the club for yeah. a while. So they're big they were big pals and so I know Walshy quite well actually. He came from Charm and he, he was the original cocky cockney. <laughs> which which is fine. Everybody needs a bit of a bit of arrogance. And I I I, I was walking, I'd had my injury by then, so uh, my pace had gone a little bit because uh, I, I did have deceiving pace. I was slower than I looked. Um, but <laughs> Walsh, he played against Walsh um, in training. And he just, he'd come up to you with the ball. You'd go to tackle. He'd rip it away. He's gone away from you. And he's turning around laughing, laughing at you. <laughs> and the number of times, the number of times I'm chasing him around Vauxhall, trying to catch him to kick him. And Pleat is going, sack, sack, no, don't. But don't worry, David, I can't catch him anyway. So it's, it's not going <laughs> <laughs> but that's the type of player I didn't like playing against. I yeah. prefer playing against the big six foot two, six foot three players who are about as mobile as I am, um, who I can go and be physical with to, to, to try and win the headers. Uh, probably the hardest one I say I played against was a guy called Peter Wynn. Yeah. Remember Villa. Peter Wynn? Aston Villa. Forest, Aston Villa. Aston Villa. Yeah. Will, yeah. Will, um, European Cup winner. Yeah. Hard as nails. Yeah. Um, I think I had my nose broke a couple of times by his his, his elbow. Um, but at the end of the game, it was all the shake hands, Marvin in the bar afterwards, have a beer, you know. So um, I, I used to relish games like that. But yeah, I would, I'd say Peter Wood was probably the most, the hardest player I played against. Yeah. And, and how do you think you go in today's way of playing football? Because it's changed a little bit, but I mean, or, or are you one of these people that looks at football these days and go, do you know what? It's made far too complicated. I'd do all right in it because football's football. Yeah, uh, again, it's a great question. I mean, the, the, the six foot three defenders that go and win up the ball in the air, the air um, are out of fashion to a degree. Um, I believe I could have played in the air simply because, uh, as Ricky kindly said, I, I was known as what, what what's known as a, a football centre half. So I was comfortable on the ball. So as you can, I can you see now how they play out from the back and the the centre halves get it and they roll it to the full back and I still think they overdo it now. And I think there's a time and a place. I think it costs too many goals. But because I had that ability and because the pitches are so good now, I still think I'd be able to uh, to hack it. Maybe not at the very top level, but but yeah, certainly. Excellent. Excellent. So moving on next to Brian. Who's supply who's feeding Brian? Right. Feeding him is going to be um, another guy, another funny guy. I mean Constant touch with on social media. Funniest guy I've come across in, in football. Um, one of the best players as well. One of the best wingers. Best penalty takers. I think, again, you probably already got him. We signed Mossy. him from Swindon. Mossy. 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 Yeah. Again, he's going to be in any any best loot 11, I would imagine. Um, absolute top, top class player and, and top guy as well. Uh, the number of goals he scored. Um, as, as a winger, uh, despite the fact that he took the penalties as well, it was phenomenal. Uh, and what a lot of people forget are the number of goals that he created from others as well. I know as a centre half, I should have scored a lot more than I did, but of the ones I did score, I would imagine 99% of them were made by Mossy either from a corner or, or a free kick. Um, just had, the, had this habit of we, we got a bit of a, a signal going where he'd, he'd stand on the ball, he'd put his he'd look up, he'd put his left hand on it. And without even taking a step back, that's when I started my, my run, without even taking a step back, he just ping it in with his left foot. I've got a yard on the defender. And if I, if I was better than I was, there'd have been more goals there. But um, it, it, it was outstanding, absolutely outstanding. And, and great character to have in the changing rooms as well. Um, again, another one spoken really highly of by many players throughout the years. But yeah. again, I mean... I'm surprised didn't play at the very, very top level of like we took. You just mentioned um, what was his name? The one at Forest, the winger. Robinson. His name? Robinson. Robert yeah, Robinson. I mean Mossy. I mean was I mean the things I hear what Mossy could do was probably as yeah. like on the same level as Robinson. Yet I mean Mossy didn't Without doubt. aspire to that sort of team. Yeah. No. I, I, I'm. I don't know why he didn't play higher. I think Ricky Ricky mentioned the, when he did his about the players that got to play for England during that time. It was, it was Ricky himself, it was Brian, 
uh, there was Walshy, all played for uh, England while they were at Luton. M Mossy should have done as well, with, without a shadow of a doubt. His, his goal output and, and his assists justified him getting at least one England cap and for them to have a look at him, without a doubt. I, did, I just think, again, it's the unfashionable Luton thing. Yeah, right. Yeah, does that does, does that bug you? Um, as obviously a Luton, um, Luton a player, because I see it from a Luton fan perspective, but as a player, yeah, yeah, to a degree. When 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 you see the likes of people that you've got close to, you know their ability, you know their character, and you see England teams being picked month after month with players in there that can't can't tie their bootlaces, then yeah, it, it does rank up. To, to be fair. Um, and, and they're not picking them just because it's little loot town out of the second division. If you're good enough, you should be given a, um, a platform to be able to prove it. I, I think uh, the fact that the fact that Ricky, Brian, and Walsh got into the England team while they're at Luton, to me, makes it a bigger achievement than it actually was. Yeah. The fact yeah. that the clubs that were at, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 But nice. Every one of, them have, every one of just no, them should have had more than the number of caps that they got without a shadow of a doubt. No, I agree. I totally agree with you. And it'll be interesting to see going forward if they if England if the England management are going to start to pick some players from outside of the big teams or if it's just a case of the same old, same old every week every single time. Um, which, which is what it seemed to be with England for a while, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To be honest, to be honest, but that that's that's a conversation for a different place, different time. We're here to sure. talk about your no. best eleven. Yeah. So, um, moving on to the other side, then next to also feeding Brian. Yeah, down down the middle with Steeny again. Um, spoiled for choice here. Um, yeah. Again, I'm I'm changing my mind as as, as we sit here. Um, when, when I when I first got to the club, um, that first season, the front three was Steen, um, Moss, and Bob Hatler called Bob Hatton. Yeah. I know Bob. Remember Bob? Yeah. Yeah. Very, very experienced player. Um, played played for Birmingham uh, before then. That first season, Bob was so unselfish. He scored so many goals, uh, but his hold up play and his running, Bob was so unselfish. As a defender, if you need an out ball, you know if you've got somebody up the front there who's always available, it makes your job a hell of a lot easier. Yeah. So whenever you're under pressure, we used to look up and, and Bob because of his experience, had got a yard or two of space to just ping it into him. He'd only took while the likes of Ricky or, or West got to support him, uh, uh, and we were on our way. Um, just, just, just a quick funny story about Bob before we go any further. When I first got to Luton, I told you how I was naive and uh, big, big signing for a, from a little club. First training session, uh, we're up at Vauxhall. Did you used to train at Vauxhall's, Mark? Yeah, you there? yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Yeah, flight path to Luton Airport. Yeah. Uh, every yeah. 10 minutes, 300 yards over your head is a jumbo jet. First training session, uh, we've got the usual warm up. It's, it's four groups, and all you're doing is you're collecting the ball, you're knocking, you're knocking it to um, a member of another team, you're following the ball, get behind that group, they control it and do the same. So we're doing this little drill. I'm like the red arrows. The ball's the ball's going everywhere, bouncing off me, Mark. It's going everywhere. I thought, oh Jesus, what are they all thinking? And we, we come to that end of that drill, uh, lasted about 10 or 15 minutes, and two experienced old pros are, are stood there talking. Bob Atten, who I've just mentioned about, a lad called Alan Birchinall. I don't know if you can remember Alan Birchinall. Yeah, I know Alan Birchinall. Did he play for Birmingham as well? Birmingham, yeah, and Leicester, yeah. Chelsea, yeah. Cockney lad. Just after Mossy, the second funniest guy in football I've ever met, ever met. And they're talking, I've walked by him and I just heard Bob say to Bert, Has he passed his medical yet? I thought, Oh no. <laughs> um, fortunately, it only went up from there, but just, just a little funny story. But at the end of that first season, uh, if I was picking that team then, Bob Hatton would have been, would have been a shoe in. Second season, we signed a lad called Steve White. Yeah. Remember yeah. Steve White, Bristol yeah. Rovers, yeah. Swindon. Yeah. Swindon. Whitey came in. Uh, I'm sure he won't mind me saying, not, not the brightest lad, but a, a smashing lad. And, and he came and the number of goals he scored that season were, were unbelievable. Um, so I'm, I'm still here at the moment trying to choose between him 
uh, and Bob, uh, I don't know which way to go. You're probably thinking about Mick Arthur. Mick, Mick wasn't there when, when I no, first came no, to the no, yeah, that, so yeah. otherwise Mick obviously would, would, would have been yeah. um, with a great shout. Um, but I, I, I'm going to go with Bob Hatton simply because of his experience and the goals he scored in, in that, that first season there. Right. Um, with, with Steve pushing him, Steve White pushing him a bit, a very, very close second. Did they use, you know, in first team, on first team match days, Marv, did the, the team on that day used to play the one touch? In the changing rooms at all? Yes, yes. Where you yeah. all stood around in a circle and you yeah. just playing one touch around the circle. You yeah. dropped the ball, dropped out, and you, you That's went right, again. Yeah. Yeah. Still That's... the winner. We used again. To play it then. Then whoever dropped the ball first dropped out. Then you go That's again. Correct, yeah, the yeah. That, out, that, so that, you, that... So you had a winner. That's right. That 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 goes on. That goes on now, Mike. I've I've Brilliant. been from, I've, I've I've brought that over to America with my girls, and it's Brilliant. like wherever I go. I, I mean, I I mean, I, I play that because it's it's straight away. It's, it's I don't know. It's a competitive thing, but you want to yeah. be the best, and you want to, and it improves your touch as well. Exactly right. Yeah. But all all them lads were comfortable at that. Even Jake Keeper. Um, but again, Steve White, bless him. Didn't know, didn't have the best touch. So you, you play the one touch, and you know as soon as the ball gets round to Steve, duck because because the, the lights are going to go or the clothes are going to come <laughs> off the page. <pedestal. laughs> Just a little funny story about Steve, but, but again, <coughs> what what a great guy. Um, I, I spoke to him a couple of weeks ago. Um, somebody wanted his his number for an interview or something, and I spoke to him. Smashing lad. Uh, and, and again, he's pushing Bob really close to that last position there. But I've, I've got I've got to go with Bob simply because of the experience, the goals he scored that first season, and how many right. times he got me out of the mire by being available when I was in trouble. <laughs> so, um, so he's actually eleven. So just I know, I'm not sure if you um, if you played with him. You got a, a sibling, right? He didn't make your, your eleven. Are you got a brother? Is it, is it, is it a bro you have you got a brother or not? Did you have a brother who played? Uh, I've, got, I've got a younger brother, Gary. Yeah, did he play at, was he at, um, with you at Mansfield? He played, played or... with me at Mansfield. Um, oh, he did. Okay. He got, he got a move. The, the season I got a move to Luton, he got one. He got, he got a transfer to Northampton. As you know, Luton and Northampton are very close, so we, we, we kept in touch then. Marv, he, he had all the ability in the world. Uh, better, fo better footballer than me, uh, touch-wise, midfield player. Two good feet, but he, he wasn't. He, he wasn't all that bothered about being a footballer. Hard to right. believe. It, it, I mean, I, I had to come out of the game through injury. I had no choice, and and I and I was I was broken over it. I, it took me a long time to get over. Um, but he actually came out of the game. Uh, his choice to come out of the game to go and be um, um, a, lear a, a car learn learner. Learn to drive oh, traffic. Oh, okay. Uh, driving instructor. Driving instructor. Yeah. Driving instructor. <laughs> so he came out of the game of his own choice to go and do that. Um, and I he was a midfielder. He was a in. midfielder, and he and he was, mm -hmm. and, and you said he was better than you. Would you say technically? Great, great ability. Both feet, king of ball. Both feet, thirty yards. Yeah. But I, the I, same. I, I, didn't have the didn't have the bottle or the heart to uh, okay. to, want to do it. And it's and it's not. I mean, I would like to say, Mike, that it's normally that is the way. I mean, when you've got an older sibling, the younger yeah. one is probably watching and seeing, obviously, what you're doing, and so they're going to be taken along on the journey um, a lot quicker than than yeah. what you are, and be a better player, so to speak. Yeah. I mean, it didn't it didn't work that way, with Ricky. Because I mean, I remember Ricky was it Ricky Andrew who was saying about his brother who went on to be a lot and got a degree or something. He said, yeah, he, said he was an unbelievable player. Unbelievable yeah. player. Yeah. So. I mean, it's not for, it's not for everybody, you know. Everybody right. to their own. But um, I'm, I'm sure you like me can't understand somebody leaving the game of their own choice to go and do to go and work for a living, so to speak. Crazy. <laughs> Never mind you two who can't. You made professional. I, I can't understand it <laughs> myself. <laughs> Somebody being I a know, fan, I I'd, I'd, I'd beg to be able to put a shirt on and play a competitive game for Luton or or anybody yeah. really. But uh, so absolutely. you've you've mentioned. Um, I think this is probably me as worse a kept secret as Ricky Hill being on your right hand side. Who would yeah. be your best manager you ever worked under? 
like I said, this is probably a worst kept secret. Uh, uh, I mentioned Billy Bingham earlier. He, he'd have to be in for the shout. Um, but because of him giving me the opportunity to play at the top level, by making me a better player, um, I, I, and the style of play that he, he, he got us playing while I was there, it's got to be Pleaty. It's got to be David. Yeah. I mean, I know, it, does, it, was... does it surprise you he's still... I mean, he still commentates. Um, I mean, yeah. he hasn't had a management gig or anything like that for, oh, must be knocking on door 20 years now. I know he still does a yeah. bit with Spurs and things like that, but does it surprise you he's still there or is this, as he always had, you mentioned he always had that passion and that just knowledge? That, that's the word, knowledge, I think. Um, I think the best will in the world, I don't, I don't know what Marv thinks. Dave, David was, was a brilliant coach. Get, you get David out on the, on the training field and there's nobody better. I personally think his, his man management skills lacked, lacked a little bit. Yeah. As, in, as in, it seemed to me as though he, he, he tried to treat every player the same off the field, whereas some people need a hand around the shoulder, uh, as Marv will tell you. Some people need a kick up the backside. I don't think he mastered that part of the game. Um, but as I say, as, as a coach, when he's out there on the field coaching players, uh, I've never come across any, anybody better. Did he pre- do you no, think he preferred that? Do you reckon he preferred being out on the, on the training oh, ground? Without a doubt, yeah, without a doubt. He, to me, although he does commentate, he, he doesn't look totally comfortable to me uh, when he's got a suit on and he's being, in, uh, he's being interviewed. And um, I don't know, he just doesn't look totally... He likes the commentary he, stuff where he can talk about the tactics and that type of thing, you reckon? Exactly. He prefers being up, up, in the ga- up in the gantry rather than down in the Absolutely, studio. Absolutely, yeah. No, no cameras yeah. on him. All you can do is hear his voice and, and his, his expertise. Um but as I say, put, put him in a tracksuit and get him on, on, on a training field. Uh, he came up with ideas back then that, that people are uh, alluding to now as being new. Um, yeah. I, think, I think we were one of the teams to play with a sweeper when, when, he, bought, when he played Raddy at sweeper and three at the back sometimes. Um, we certainly all played out from the back. Uh, we didn't do it to the degree they're doing now. It's costing goals because there's a time and a place. But we certainly played out from from the back uh, back then. So all the I think a lot of people have said this, the pressing game. A lot of people have said it's the pressings yeah. what David started off as Absolutely. well. Absolutely, yeah. Because the, the three lads I've got up front, uh, you include Steve in that. Mossy, Steve, Bob Batten when he played Steeny, they'd start trying to win the ball back as soon as, soon as he lost it. You're right, and then Ricky'd be up behind him, and, and Brian or Paddy and, and Lil, and then us as a back four. Uh, played up. You're right, you're spot on. Um, and these are all ideas now that people think are new. We were doing them mm. 35 years ago. I'd agree That's with what Mike, said that, what Mike said there about um, David being a, like he was an excellent coach. I mean, he, he was um, um, the manager that signed me as an uh, apprentice, but like, um, I mean, he left to go to Spurs um, yeah. before I made my, my debut. But on the field, as a coach, like you said, he was second to none. He, I mean, his drills, his like, his whole way how he he wanted us to play, and it was like the yeah. ball movement, quick touch, play quickly, and all that. It was brilliant. And then going on to the um, man management skills, I probably would probably slightly agree with you there as well. But I feel that it was more of a case with David. It was that yeah. I, I mean. I felt I, I mean, I'm not saying I was clever, but I felt I worked him out quite quickly. He was always testing you. It was always like, if he ever was going to say something to you, it was, a, it was just to see what sort of character you was. And it'd always be to see, obviously, if you'd buckle under pressure sort of thing. That's yeah. what he reminded me. So you had to be on your toes. You had to be on your toes yeah. constantly. And I felt that if he felt that you maybe you was a little bit not as strong as... Yeah. what he thought he was, he would dominate you in that respect. Whereas yeah. I felt that I've been in a dressing room where some players I've thought to myself, oh my gosh, please say the right thing because he's going to crucify you. If you, you know what I mean? And I would yeah. always probably sometimes give a throwaway comment. If he asks me a question in front of yeah. everyone in the yeah. dressing room, I know it's a, it's a case where I have to come back and be quite smart, a little bit funny with my answer to just to get the tone of the dressing room so that it wasn't like him trying to isolate me and put pressure on me to make me 
look at like like a bit of a, a fool to be to be yeah. honest. Not, not to say that he's trying to make me look an idiot, but like he'd always sort of like try and get an upper hand some way. And so I'd always try and get a, an answer back where the lads would be laughing and he and he'll like give a little nod sometimes and just like clever Johnson. I said today, clever Johnson, well done, well done, sort uh, of thing. You, you, Marv, you've absolutely nailed it there. That is exactly what what he's like. Yeah. Um the, the, I also, at the time I was there as well, I don't know if it was the same when you was there, a lot of the players were like that as well. They, they, if new players came in, they, they test the new players to see whether yeah. they're going to fit in all right. That, was that the same with yourself? Yeah, always. always. Yeah. You know what, the dressing the dress room banter's like, Mike, I mean, oh. if you if you are new, if you're new coming to the dressing room, I mean, I think some of the people, I can't think who it was on here, someone talked about it, I think Andrew said about, who was it someone said about their clothes? They were laughing at their. Someone was taking the uh, mickey out of someone's clothes. They walked in the dress room and said, hey, "What are you wearing?" And just like straight yeah. away on day one, who was that? On day yeah. one, they said, "I think I think Fozzie was laughing at someone's clothes." Oh, now you no, you're wearing that for a joke. Are you wearing that for a joke or something? And it's like <laughs> he thought, oh "My gosh, is he is he talking to me like that?" Sort of thing. I can't think who that was now. Yeah, it, it, it was brutal at times. Brutal. Yeah. Bro but, but it's, it's character building as well. It's yes, it was. Building. It was. It was massive character building. And I think a lot of the things which I mean what goes on now is probably a little bit timid, I'd say, compared to what yeah. some of the things what went on in our day, Mike. <laughs> Trust me. You wouldn't get away with it these days, Mark, would you? No. 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 No, not at all. Not at all. Excellent. So um we all also like to finish just by finding out what you're up to these days. Yeah. Um, Mike, if you're still involved in football or um, or other stuff as well, um, I know obviously lockdown at the moment, but coming out of lockdown yeah. and what what type of thing you're into? Well, since I finished football, uh, when I, when I first uh, finished football at Middlesbrough, I went straight into the pub trade. Yep, I spent most of my time while I was playing in the pub, so I thought it'd be a natural progression to, to get a pub after I finished playing. Start earning uh, it rather than take money over the absolutely. bar rather than passing it the other way. Yep. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, we then started a family. I didn't, th I didn't think it was the right sort of environment to bring kids up, so I got out, out of that. And pretty much for the last 20 years, I've been in, in sales in, in some way or another, selling something, whether it be newspaper advertising or... Um, whatever, uh, three or four different sales jobs over, over the last 20 years. Um, at, the, uh, at the last 12 months, I think I've been furloughed for about nine months of them, so I'm being paid to stay at home, uh, which is a little bit boring, but I don't mind I don't mind in this weather. Uh, it, it was a bit harsh uh, in, in the winter. Um, Football-wise, I, I, like, I follow Liverpool, so I, I, I keep up with football on the TV. I don't go to a lot of live games. Uh, occasionally, I do a little bit of um, commentary on Mansfield Town. They ask me occasionally. I used to do it regularly, but the the quality of football down there at the moment is so poor. I tend to pick my games a little bit more. Um, <laughs> I'll do the FA Cup <laughs> ones. The FA Cup run. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Liverpool <laughs> in the third round. Uh, yeah, I'll do that one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, my, my son played to a good non non league standard up until recently. He got a little bit old for it. He's also got a grand uh, a son now, my grandson, five years old. He's he's mad into football. Um, so yeah, still pretty busy. Uh, football, football. Once football's in your blood, I'm sure you'll more agree. It, it, it's always in your blood, uh, whether you're yeah. playing it what or or whatever. Um, and again, thankfully, I've got back in touch with a few of the players that we've just been talking about in there. I'm in touch with them social media wise. And um, we're all going to get together after all this uh, this mess is over and uh, have a beer or two reminiscing on some of the things we've just been talking about. No, I think that's great, Mike, because, I mean, I want to touch on what you said there. Like, it's good that you've just got back in touch with Ricky and you're, you're speaking. But, like, that's, that's literally... Um, I was talking about this with someone the other day. That's literally how the, the lives... Are, of us footballers are you know you, you you come to a club and you and you're with someone and you're and you're like you're with them every single minute of the day and then one of you yeah. might get a move and then it's just like boom you don't hear them but it's not like you're falling out or anything it's just the way yeah. this industry was and yeah. I mean for me I mean I was always been at Luton for 20 years so it was a case where there was always players leaving and going away yeah. from me but I mean there's there's still was there's Two 
players who probably I've in all the years that I've always stayed in touch from when I first come into touch, contact with them, which is rare. I'm trying to say because you imagine the amount of players that have come through Luton exactly. in the 20 years yeah. I've been there. There's only two players really that I've still was always in contact with, no matter what, if they were playing at um, Stoke or Preston or wherever. I mean, yeah. so that just shows you that that's the how it was in our industry, you know. Well, as, as I said earlier, when, when I was there, I was there five years. Most of the players there were there for the whole of that five years. One or two uh, came, came and went. Uh, but as I say, it was only probably a smaller squad then because they only used one, one sub. So you didn't need as, as big a squad then. And as I say, we really were a band of brothers then. We were so close, all of us. And, and I think the, the saddest thing for me was that last day, I'd gone into the ground because I'm still suffering from my knee. I was still having some treatment from John Sheridan that I'd been doing for about the previous two years. And um, I went in that last day to pick up my boots and I didn't I didn't see one player say cheerio to or, or, or anything like that. Just John Sheridan didn't see the manager, didn't see a player because it all broke up for the summer. And I just walked out to Kenilworth Road with my boots and, and that was it up until, as I say, about three years ago when... Uh, I was invited to this reunion, which was brilliant. All the old dads were there and um, managed to keep in touch with some of them since then. And we'll carry that on now as well. I think this this lockdown, this um, pandemic this last year, put a lot of things in perspective, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. No, definitely. Definitely. Fantastic. Well, um, it was lovely to hear from you. Um, and thanks yeah. very much for giving up some of your time, um, Mike, to, to join us. Um, and that was... Uh, Mike Saxby's My Best 11.